Yo, what's going on everyone? It's Brian and Jim here with Drink a Beer and Play a Game and welcome to another episode of the Power Hour. Yes, hello everyone. Welcome to episode 70. That's all I got. I felt like, I felt like there was something following that. Jim. I thought so too. And, I thought so too and then I blanked out. Hey Jim, are we allowed to uh, go over what we're drinking and playing, or do you want to bitch about something? No, nah, no, nah, I'm a happy boy this week, Brian. I'm a good old boy. I've been a little, little negative lately. Actually, I have a little bit of a rant coming up, but for the most a part, a little bit negative. And lately, you want to change those words around and maybe say always negative. And for the past six years, <laughs> look, Brian, as we've come to learn with in this day of the age of the internet, you know, meanings of words they're subject to interpretation anymore. And I'd say, you know, lately, okay. That's what I'll go with. Well, I guess. I, I guess in the in the grand scheme of your total life, I, it is lately in your life. So, <laughs> all right. So, so what is Happy Boy Jim drinking tonight? Oh, I am actually pouring it right now. I am drinking the Mardi Gras Bach by the Abita Brewing Brewery. Mm. Abita Mardi Gras Bach is brewed with pale pilsner and caramel malts and a German pearl hops. Our box is similar to German my box. May box? My box? Fry, tell me what it is. It's my box. My box, okay. With its rich malt flavor and full body, Mardi Gras box brings the fun of carnival season to you wherever you are. All right. Nice little understated right up there. Let's see. Alcohol, 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 alcohol. 6.5%. Not bad. Nice. Um. Yeah, so I'm drinking another one of these Nordic uh, farmhouses. You would. I can't. I can't remember if I'm a Viking. I make Viking what? videos. Look at me. I'm Listen, right. Viking, Viking, Viking. Listen, Jim. We can't all be French or whatever you are. You, you know, sometimes you got to be more unique, and you can't just be the guy who has hair that grows all funky like you. You know, sometimes you gotta have a little style, and you know, part of it is being Nordic. So don't hate on my people. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um. But anyway, so I can't remember if I had. They're, like, my wife had got me a whole variety pack of this and Havoc uh, Meaderies, uh, their meads. So this one is called the Nordic Farmhouse. It's a Saison-style mead with cranberries. And, uh, yeah, there's a pretty big write-up that I'm not going to do. But it's actually pretty solid uh, meadery. It's the Gronvel Fell Meadery. And I'm trying to see where... Oh, out of Vermont. So um, if you like mead... It's pretty damn solid, like all the stuff from them. But I will say, unlike most meads you're going to get from other companies, they don't add a bunch of other sugars and flavors. It's just straight up honey, water. In this case, this one has cranberry juice, and that's it. So it's very bare bones, but it's not bad. If you've never tried mead, this will be a good starter. But for those of you who like things a little sweeter, mm, there's probably better options out there for you. Right, would you consider it a gateway drug, or is it just not sweet enough to appeal to the masses? So, Monica wasn't crazy. She liked the mead we got from Ireland, and that uh, bee nectar meadery. I think you've seen their bottles, too. They're the ones that have, like, um, a whole variety of, like, specialty. Like, one is called Zombie Killer, one was called Black Fang. But they're, like, a lot of different flavors in the mead. Um yeah, I don't know if it would be a gateway for people. Now, if you don't like sweetness, then it's a perfectly fine because, I mean, its base is honey, so there is a sweetness. But I think when you're used to sugar and other shit, even from craft beers, it's uh, a little tame in the sweep department. I'll say that. But I like it. Like you said, Jim would call this definitely refreshing or ah. crisp or whatever goddamn words he would use. Both. I would use both. <laughs> So, yeah, it's uh, only 5.7%, and I just Bitch have it. so many of these at this point. So, yeah. All right, sounds good. Sounds solid. And moving on to our normal startups. Brian, what have you been playing? All right, so um, last podcast I said how I beat that uh, Little Nightmare. So now I've moved on to... Uh, honestly, I haven't been doing much. I did play more of that terrible game that will be getting a review. Right, not too many spoilers us. now. <laughs> and if you follow me on Twitter, or Jim on Twitter, well, drink a beer, play a game, Jim retweet it. 
I wasn't being a smart ass. I legit wanted to know about Dragon Ball Z. I was I'm trying to help full- you, actually. Yeah, no, and I fully, I was fully, some people, I think, um, well, you gave the worst answer first, of course. It, it was, then, it was the, it was the TLDR. Anyone who knows Dragon yeah. Ball knows Goku wins. But, uh, no, 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 like, some people, I think, gave me, I forget who gave me the best one, but some of them were pretty good, because, obviously, I can Google it, and I think I've even asked you about that before, because I think you said you really like Dragon and I, yeah. I've never been into it, I've never watched an episode of it, and this was the first Dragon Ball Z game I've ever played, so, I'm just first like, start. I'm just like, what, it, like, what is going on? And I know it's weird to try to dissect anime in general, um, and I've seen plenty of memes about people always bitching that. I mean, I'm sure I'm going to butcher his name, but is it Vegeta? Yeah, now you nailed it. Okay, so, like, apparently he's just the whooping boy that everyone cheers for, but, like, he gets his ass whooped in everything. Mm, yeah. Is that true? Yeah, it's, it's pretty fair. Pretty fair assessment. I, see, I, I basically see memes of that all the time, of, like, him just getting his ass whooped all the time, and everyone's like, he should be the best. But yeah, no, so I've been playing that. I played that a lot. Um, and it's just been like a recycling of really just Call of Duties, PUBGs, just kind of like time wasters. And then I actually last night did a quick uh, Friday the 13th. Haven't played that game in a little while. And right off the bat, I just won within five minutes as a survivor. Like I got all the parts for a boat and escaped. And. You, you've played that game with me a couple times. You know how frustrating it is when you have people who play with you, they don't know what they're doing. I've never I've jackass, never played with anyone who actually got the boat going. Okay, so, Maybe like, once? but you know, just like the car, like, once you're getting the parts on it, once you turn it on, Jason's alerted to you, and this asshole is standing next to the boat, but he's not getting on it. So I'm like, <laughs> come on, dude, get on. So I just left him. I was like, oh, fuck you. I'm not waiting for you. So I'm sure he was pissed, but I'm kind of like, shit or get off the pot, man. So yeah, those are that's basically all I've been playing. How about you? Yeah, I haven't been playing too much of... Uh, I've been playing Tiny Tank, the Patreon suggestion from Nerdy Nick. And Cheapo Weepo Brian, I think, bought a shitty disc. So now here's gonna... the deal. Jim said this before the podcast, and if it works fine on mine, then Jim is Cheapo Weepo Jim and has shitty PlayStations. I How do about ha- that, Jim? I have I have one more PlayStation One I can try because I tried my my go to PlayStation One and it didn't work. Well, it worked like halfway through and then like through the middle of this middle level, like level seven I think is the exact center of the game and it's in two parts. And loading up the second part, it just stopped and it wouldn't read in my PlayStation Two at all. So I got I got I got a spare PlayStation to try. So Did maybe you try I'll your out. PlayStation Three. No, I didn't. That would probably work, you know, emulated. But you can get the game capture for it. I played enough. I can give my two cents. Yeah. And um, what else? What else? Well, what but else? Here's the deal. It's supposed to be a two-hour game. So how long did you put into it? Uh, I mean, including cutscenes, probably in like an hour, hour 15, something like that. One level I got lost in because it was really like it didn't tell you good enough what to do. So I had to look it up after like 10 minutes. But it was like more more of a puzzle. Jim, that's one of my favorite sayings you've ever did. It didn't tell you good enough what to do. Yeah, yeah. I, I'll admit, I bitched out on it. I could have probably figured it out if I, like, really paid attention to what they were. They basically gave you the mission objective in the beginning. And I, you know, I go, you know, story words, blah, blah, blah. So I kind of did you, it myself. You were too busy probably looking at your phone, dicking around during cutscenes. Actually, the cutscenes are fucking funny in this game. It's one of those, you'll, you'll see it when you play it. It's, it's got some stuff that's like, mm, can't make them jokes no more. <laughs> oh, I already like it then. Yeah, you know, it's it's got some style to it. I'll give it that. So it's a pleasant surprise because I had never heard of it. And, right. yeah, besides that, uh, when I had a little bit of free time, I'd be dicking around with Tetris 99 again just because I haven't done it in months. And you still suck! I choked. I choked bad. I got second place, and I just choked, choked, choked. And then I was, like, doing good in the next game I was playing, and then my one Joy-Con decided to die. And it didn't just give me a little drift. It just stopped pairing with the Switch. And I put in other Joy-Cons I had, and they worked fine. And it wasn't all the buttons. It was, like, the shoulder button and something else just stopped working. So I'll make a, I'll make a video of my trials and tribulations of trying to repair my Joy-Con before I, you know, throw it out and just buy another one. Oh, Jim. 
Jim, Jim, Jim. That's my luck. I ch- I, ch- I choke in the closest I've been to a victory. I choke, and then my Joy-Con breaks right after. Because that is the life I live. I mean, is it that, or is it you're just not good at the game? Shut. That you talk so shut. much about. And I love it. It's a great game. I, I've got something like 10 or 11 wins already. There is some shenanigans going it. on. There is, There's there is zero shenanigans. Sh- Jim, Jim, you how... You've known me, and you might not like to admit it, but you know if I dig into a game, pretty good at them, right? I know when you dig in, you get good at them. I know. So I, that was my I told you that was my perfect. It's time to poop. I'm gonna pick that up. I'm gonna try. I'll get three or four games in, and you know those added up. I think it's I look through your screens. Me. There's not enough Japanese names in your screens, so you're going against Caesar competition. <laughs> oh, what are you trying to say, Jim? Racist. Japanese people are better at games. Yeah, you're being racist against everybody else. Ah, uh, yeah, that those darn compliments. But ah, you know, <laughs> uh, well, Listen, canceled. Jim. Whatever. I was due. I was due for my Joy-Con to break, so I guess I'm due for this. Listen, Jim. Just it's fine. I warned you I'd be better when I played it, and eventually I will break down and get Rocket League, so I can be better at that than you. Like it's just we know what's gonna happen. Because you know what's going to happen. We're going to do a drinking game for Rocket League or any of these or Tetris. And you know, like, I'm just going to smoke you. And you're going to make some excuse. And, you know, it's fine. It's ador- It's adorable by now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. Probably will happen. Whatever. <laughs> but, yeah, I, that, that Tetris screenshot made me laugh pretty hard. I'm sure it did. I'm sure <laughs> it fucking did. See, see, Angry Jimmy's coming back. Didn't last long. I was yeah, all nice like and happy. Not supposed to be angry, Jim. <sighs> start. Do you, well, need, do you need a trip to Mulberry Hill? <laughs> well, that's Salisbury Hill. What the fuck's Mulberry Hill? Oh, yeah. I don't know, but the funny thing is you knew exactly I knew, what I was talking I knew what you were talking about. I've known you long <laughs> enough, goddammit. I don't actually. Mulberry Street is a horror movie me and Matt used to watch a lot in college. Oh, where I, was, it's I do about, remember that. Yeah, the zombie movie, but they're like rats. It uh-huh. was really, it's actually a pretty damn good movie, but yeah, I don't know why I said Mulberry Hill. That was I just being in your head. That that and Midnight yeah. Me Train were like you're a fucking and Blood that's a great movie, man. Hey, Bradley Cooper. That was that was before he was really known. This is true. All right, moving on, moving on from you being better than me at games. Patreon questions. <laughs> www.patreon.com slash drink a beer and play a game where for as little as two dollars a month you can ask a question that we will answer on this power hour podcast and if you enjoy your questions maybe give a little more maybe have your name in our descriptions in the ten dollar tier maybe buy the t-shirt in the links below at our merch store on teespring.com and thank you to everyone who is currently excuse me a supporting patreon we truly appreciate it and uh we, we just mean that from the bottom of our hearts. So thank you, everyone, who does follow us. Oh, yeah, definitely. And Dean told me I don't whore our, uh, t- our merch store enough, so I'm going to start doing that more. Yeah, you don't whore the relevant stuff enough. You whore stupid stuff. Man, it's about getting eyes and <laughs> eyes on us, Brian. <laughs> doesn't make sense, but go on. Eyes lead to possible clicks, just, which just, leads just, to possible just, views, which leads just. to possible profit. <laughs> it hasn't worked out so, well. Tim, I think if, 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 if there was a pie chart of – Things you did on Twitter from our account, I think it's maybe 50% video games. Then there's a chunk of wrestling. Then there's a chunk of political. Then there's a chunk of being up uh, that damn uh, dick show's ass. And then there's just there's just weird chunks of, I don't even know what the fuck you're doing. Hey. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so. <laughs> so, from Game Whisperer Dean, do either of you yearn for another Ron Gilbert Monkey Island game? Did you play the Monkey Island games? A little. I didn't really put a ton of time into them. I know I know what they are. Played a little bit. So I played the first one and second one. I played the first one all the way through. You know what? I feel like those are games that, um, because they're point and click, the humor is re- it's like really well written, but it didn't. It just doesn't age well as a game that you'd want to pick up and play. Like I went through that first one uh, more or less to make a video about like bars and video games. Yeah, and. It's fun. It's funny, but you and I, like, we, we're we not point-and-click guys. At least I know I'm not. And it just, it didn't really grab me, you know? It, it wasn't enough to make me really, like, yearn for more and more and more, because I, I don't know how many sequels it had. I just know for sure about the second one. 
So for me, honestly, not at this point. I mean, Telltale is the only point and click games I'd consider. Um, but like I said, they're such a weird, like I have to be in such a particular mood to want to play them that I could honestly care less. If there's people out there that want it, then I want it for them. How about that? There you go. Yeah, I mean, I've like I said, I never really played or spent enough time with one of them. Maybe one of these days I'll finally, maybe we'll do one of the games with the site so I can force myself to play through one. And then I'll, I'll answer after that part. <laughs> a to-be-continued Patreon question. Because as, cause as really of right now, played eh? through like point and clicks that much. I don't know if I've played all the way through any of them. Like I've I've played like I've played some Mist. I've played some Seventh Guest. I've played shit like that, and like it just never holds my attention enough to want to finish. I guess. I'm... Yeah, Seventh yeah. Guest I really liked. Most horror point and clicks I can stick through. You know what the problem is? You know what the problem is too? Like a lot of the old ones, they take like just a time it takes to load moving from screen to screen i'm way mm. too impatient for that shit so yeah like the mists and the seventh guest i guess because i've played those early 3d ones which take a lot of loading and crap maybe i would do better with a monkey island or something that you know gives me a little yeah. bit more instant feedback well the nice one was the monkey island i played for 360 and it's i'm pretty sure you can do it on xbox one where they have revised new graphics and in kind of like a lot of games are doing now, you hit a button and you can switch over to the original graphics if you want to do that or oh, nice. do the new one. So it's it's cool. That I liked. That might be the but way I to go I think my for problem me. with all pointing clicks is I inevitably get to multiple parts where I literally, like, what do I do? Like, I, I feel like I, I picked up, I inspected everything. And there's always, like, especially games like that where it's like, use the chicken bone and the cannon you're like well why would i why? have yeah. known to do that like so it's uh i don't know if it would be a not nintendo power because they weren't nintendo games but if those were games that were meant for like you had a book to go along with it or something or you just truly spent all your time analyzing every inch of every screen i like you just said i don't have the time for that and uh especially now if we're doing videos like if i get stuck and i spend too much time i'm just gonna look up what i need to do to get me to the next part so yeah, yeah that's... I, I couldn't care less though honestly yeah I have that problem with metroidvanias too i always get hopelessly lost in them yeah <laughs> all right next up what good question though next up from uh gamer astral the worst n64 game that is not superman 64 and why Well, you probably, well, not probably, you have played way more N64 games. True. But um, I've probably played, if I'm being generous, 50 games on the N64. Um, but so my second worst would be, for sure, Road Rash 64. Just because we played that. Um, I didn't play a lot of games that I thought were that bad on that system yeah yeah i'll go road rush 64 for that yeah i'm gonna go with armorines um it's a first person shooter yeah, i think it uses the same control scheme as like the torok games I've, I've i played it for a little bit like about an hour or so and i was like this is bad i got in a bundle and imagine yeah imagine torok but it runs at like 10 frames per second Oh, that's rough. Yeah, because it's one of those ones where it's like insect demons are like invading the earth and you got to like fight off the insect swarms and crap like that. But it's just such a choppy experience, even for like N64 standards at this point. Yeah. You know, come to think of it, and maybe even though I jokingly talk shit on the N64 because of its terrible controller and some of the other issues it had, I feel like it didn't have a lot of terrible games. Truly terrible games? Like, Not really. It had a lot of misses but, and a lot of growing pains. Like, it also, though, I feel like didn't have a lot of excellent games. Like, it, I feel Fair. like it had a, like it had a okay amount. Like, there's a couple. I feel like most games were just, okay, they're fine. Like, you know, like kind of like your answer for things. Like, not amazing, not terrible, just they get the job done. <laughs> no, no, that's kind of a fair assessment. I think the... the Obviously, me praising the N64 again, but, like, yeah, like, I think a lot of the library gets shit on too much. 
it's got a lot of really interesting games and a lot of like really forward thinking games, but it doesn't have as many home runs basically. Yeah, and I, and and yeah, I'm not like you said, I'm not knocking it because I guess in the end it's probably better to have just a bunch of fine games than a bunch of shit games. Right. Like yeah, I mean the biggest lack we've said it a thousand times RPGs and shit like that. So. Um, no, good question, though. Yeah, definitely. Next up, G to the next level. Since I got my mister, I've been on a Neo Geo kick, especially Baseball Stars 2. <laughs> what is your favorite arcade, arcade style sports game ever? Hmm. Well, you and I may do a list about this, ah. but. I. Okay, here's the question. Do you. Can we consider Tecmo Super Bowl arcade style? I guess because it's definitely not a simulation. So I think, you know, if you go either simulation or arcade, then it would fall into arcade. I'm probably torn between that and NBA Jam. And if I had to, like, just because I played more time with it, I'd go Tecmo Super Bowl. But it's really close because you and I have talked about those two games anyway. Yeah. Um, Yeah, when it comes to arcade sports games... Yeah, it's tough to get away from either one of them. So, probably Tecmo Super Bowl. There you go. I would probably go with NFL Blitz. That was just one that I put a ton of time into back in the day. And funny enough, I've never owned it, but it was the game whenever I went over my buddy's place that had it. That's like, we would play that for days on end. I was going to say, who who did you play that with? My friends growing up. Hmm. Interesting. I would not have seen you as an NFL Blitz guy. Oh, it's so. stupid fun. Doing elbow drops on people after you tackle them? Shit. No, but you, like... Ah, yeah, yeah. I, I, no, miss that, I miss that era. Like, NFL hits, MLB, the bigs, uh, NBA... I mean, I guess NBA Jam is the last one. They never really had their overly arcadey one, unless I'm missing something, which I probably am. And then NFL Blitz. Like, I miss that era of, like, arcadey, just over-the-top, you know, turn on a super special and hit a 4,000-foot home run, <laughs> shit like that. I mean, the newest example for football would be that uh, Blood Bowl. Blood Bowl or Mutant Football League, yeah. Yeah. Oh, by the way, not to take us on a detour, speaking of arcadey games, the Def Jam games, um, did you play them as a kid? You mean, like, Fight for New York, which is 150 bucks now? Yes. Did you play that when no, you were I, younger? No, I didn't, but I wish I did. Because um, I would have still had it. <laughs> Well, I had Def Jam Vendetta, not Fight for New York. Um, so you and I should definitely play that. But yeah, that that looks something right up our alley. I feel like if we played it, we'd have way more fun than we should. I Probably. also have Celebrity Deathmatch. Which I have I'm that dying too. To play I have that you. too. Yeah, I, I, I played it before. It's you know what? It's really it's flawed and choppy, but it's 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 goofy fun. Like you know the way we had fun with Simpsons Wrestling, even though it's really bad. Mm-hmm. Celebrity Deathmatch is kind of like that, but the gameplay is, like, slightly better. Dude, I miss that. I love that show as a kid. Oh, dude, it was one of the best. Yeah, it was just yeah, so goddamn goofy, but, yeah. <clears throat> and it's yeah, Stone sorry Cold. To take a, sorry to take a de- detour, but, no, I think uh, I, that's one thing I yearn for is more arcade-style goofy games. And, unfortunately, sports games all take themselves way too serious and they all have to be simulation and come out every single year and just be roster changes yeah even wrestling is included in that now so yeah it doesn't it doesn't help that ea basically threw all the money at all the brands to have the exclusivity deals for the most part so that's what happens yeah next up from alex perez what is one change you would make to your favorite game to make them even favorite hmm. all right well, Brian, I think that already happened to you. Yeah, Resident Evil got its remake. Um, is there anything even with the remake that could make it better? I don't... I honestly don't know. I, I feel like the game is perfect for what it needs to do. The tank controls, even with the updated controls, they're fine. I would just rather s- some kind of control scheme where it is even a little bit better but i know part of the what makes it survival horror is the not completely perfect controls of those earlier games so yeah there's really not maybe make it like the resident evil 2 remake and resident evil 3 remake controls um 
there's not really much else I think you can do. I I'm really happy with that game. Yeah, and like my favorite game, Star Fox sixty four. I guess the only thing you could do is like give it the um, the better graphics that were in the three DS remake, but put it on the Switch and let you do online multiplayer battles. I guess that's really all you can do. I was gonna say you. I feel like it would ruin it for you if they tried. Like, say they came out and were like hyper realistic stylized graphics for that and mm. better sound. I feel like you part of what you like about it is the kind of goofiness. Maybe, but like I like the 3DS remake. The only thing I don't like about it is using the 3DS for it. Like the circle stick. I mean, I'm just such a purist with the N64 stick for that game. Anything else just feels off. So, yeah, give me the 3DS graphic. Yeah, if they went like ultra super realistic, maybe it'll probably be weird. But give me the 3DS graphics, give me online multiplayer battles, and give me a USB adapter for my N64 controller so I can use that with it. And I guess I'd have I'd have my perfect Switch set up for that. Bro, I'm a purist. Did you also see, and I don't know if it was a Photoshop, it looked like an N64 controller that plugs into your Switch. Oh, yeah, I've seen it. That's been around for a while. Is that... Is that is that just Photoshop or is that real? No, nah, it's Photoshop. Okay, thank God. Whew. I was like, that would be so terrible. No, it would be awesome. It would be perfect. Shut up, Jim. Next up, from Eric Lewacki. Given the choice, do you guys prefer to play classic first-person shooters such as Quake, Duke, Duke Nukem, or Wolfenstein 3D with a controller or a mouse and keyboard, and why? I've always been controller. Even though I'm more of the PC guy between Jim and I, um, I fully understand that the mouse it, you get that precision and that quick ability to aim where you want um so you get better control with mouse without a doubt but i kind of feel like if it makes sense you're like kind of cheating using a mouse and keyboards i don't care like i hate using keyboards and when i have to play a pc game where i'm forced to use a keyboard it drives it down for me. Like, the point of a game to me is having a controller in your hand. So whenever I can, especially from games with Steam and stuff, I plug in a modern controller, and that's what I try to map my buttons to, if I can. Um, yeah, so even on those old games, um, even though I know it's a lot easier with the mouse, I would prefer to use a controller where I can. All right, and for me, it really depends on whatever I played the game with first. So, like, Call of Duty, I couldn't imagine using keyboard and mouse with it, but playing Unreal Tournament or Quake 2 or something like that, I would have to use keyboard and mouse with it. I could probably get used to it, and it isn't, like, terrible to use a controller with those games, but I I just grew up using keyboard and mouse for those certain ones. So that's what I would need to use going forward. Makes sense. Yeah. All right, and last up from Sandy N. What is your favorite drunk story of each other? Oh, no. P.S. Brian, get a new chair, please. Get a new chair. Oh, well, I actually broke the chair last week. Ah, fatty. Um, the whole, well, no, the arm was broken. Cause yeah, because you, yeah, your big fat ass was on it. That's did what happened. You, did you hear what I just said, Jeff? Yes, I heard your cocks joke. <laughs> har, 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 har. <laughs> Jim, did you find yours yet? <laughs> Still looking. Still waking up gooey. I don't know if I have a... I mean, you have you have, you, have, too many. you have so much to pick from, Brian. That's the problem for you. I mean, there's funny, bec- like, on your birthday, at wherever it was, where you did a split in the stall and fell into your pukey toilet. Buckhead. And your ass crack was out, and then I had to carry you through. Yep. And you were yelling all sorts of things, and I don't know how you had... One thing that's amazed me, and... I was thinking about that is how you haven't gotten your ass kicked more. Maybe it's because you were around us, but you turn into such a shit talker when you start drinking. It is amazing you haven't got your ass kicked. It is amazing. Maybe they just look at me and just go, oh. That's where I that's my <laughs> only guess. Is like Pete like and you wouldn't know it. Like most people that know Jim, like you wouldn't like you might see it a little bit with the way he shit posts on Twitter and stuff, but he, there's a switch, and Jim can become just really loud and obnoxious when he drinks. Hold on one second. So, and he, uh, 
yeah, once he gets drunk, he just lets it all go. I don't, like you said, I don't know if it's just because he's usually around a bunch of people that he knows are just going to take care of him. But, uh, yeah, I don't yeah. know, man. F- favorite drunk story. Like, who? Jim? There's like, there, there really is. It's, 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 it's like saying for people who don't know what their favorite movie favorites, it's like <laughs> saying, what's your favorite song? Like there's, oh, I, I can think of just tons. Right. Of you're, moments. you're buried in all your riches right now. I, I am. I, I, I'm actually more curious. I don't know if you have a favorite one of me. Yeah. I'm um, like, I'm like struggling because like you don't make, you generally don't make an ass of yourself when you're drunk, even when you're like blackout drunk or stupid, like, you, you, your version of you being blackout drunk is just like either you like overly dancing like a jackass on the dance floor, like dumb harmless mm-hmm. crap, or maybe some like slightly or like some cringe stuff. Like when we would go to bars that would have a punching machine and you would basically stand around all night to beat all the Northeast trash who were like trying to outpunch you on it, where you would literally spend like all four hours there. But uh, I, I don't know. Maybe see, it's a like I was almost going to do that, the, uh, the lapper story. But I don't, we weren't drunk at the time. Like we were buzzed leave from going from the, uh, the the house to there. But I can't consider that a real drunk story. I don't think. Wait, the the lappers. Right when we got there, and uh, the bachelor to be was getting his dance, but they were it was before like their song kicked on. So you looked peeked over the corner, and you're like, they're just fucking sitting there. Oh yeah, I mean we were maybe drunk. We we're buzzed. Yeah, like if I said, anything. I it's funny because people who know me think i would tend to be more violent or whatever i'm probably the most chill of all of our friends like if you get me to a point i will turn a knob but i'm usually the calmer head even when i'm really drunk yeah like jim said i might become more dancey i might become that's honestly probably like i don't freak out i don't yeah like you'll be know. fine with like when we when the few times anymore when it's just the guys going out and we'll do our little challenges when we're at the bar of like hey go up to this girl and say this stupid thing like you don't really have any like fear of doing anything like that but it's oh, also no. not like but, any stupid like like a lot of us don't have but yeah but yeah like talking to groups of girls was never an issue like I didn't need to be drunk so I never Jim just has a lot of and like I said I don't know if they're good or if they're bad they're just they're just gym stories that if you're friends with Jim, you just expect. Like you said, him falling in his own pee in the ice. Him, you know, a lot of it tends to be you falling, not being able to stand up. Yeah. For some reason, your feet, like, if Jim was a video game character, when he gets drunk, he's automatically in an ice level where he can't keep his feet still. And they just go out from under him. Like, yeah. there's no more balance. It's amazing. I have balance issues as is, and you can put a get me blackout drunk, and I'm Ernest Evans at that point. It's bad. Yeah, um, yeah, it's tough, and it's tough to say favorite because yeah, we just. I think the problem is we I I we've been drunk with each other way too much, and then there's been a lot of times. I I've probably even my stupider shit I've done. I don't even know if I was necessarily around you. Right. It's tough to tell, but. Yeah, I don't know, man. There's been a lot. How how many times have you puked at a bar? Oh, Jesus Christ. Um, and not, I, I'm, I know in the bathroom, but I'm saying, like, haven't you thrown up in a bar? Well, I feel like you have. What do you mean, just, like, standing on the floor and just puking on the ground? Yeah, like like just being in the bar. No, not really. I always seem to make it to the bathroom for the most part. Now, whether I make it all in the toilet is a different question, but I always make it to the bathroom. Okay. No, actually, it was one of our other friends. Yeah, you're, thinking, you're thinking of Eric. You know who. No. Well, I have a few of them. Not the Eric story. <laughs> Not the Juan story? I, the Juan story. That's the one I that was. <laughs> so, yeah. That, that's a great So, our one buddy, we were, this was before we had met our wives and shit. We were out at the bar talking to some girls, and we do a round of shots. And our buddy Juan isn't good with uh, whiskey. And we're like, he's like, is this whiskey? And we're like, nah, nah, just drink it. So, of course, it was whiskey. And he takes the shot. And it wasn't even, like, puke that came out. It was, like, foam. It had, like, instantly. It was, well, the other problem was 
he had gotten sick on his brother's at the time girlfriend. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> and whether he he did it on purpose, like he didn't like her. I he didn't like her, so that that's part of the like. Did he do it on purpose? It's always it's always tough to tell. Um, I don't know your other drunk stories. I still laugh at the blueberry all the time. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. <laughs> Oh, I don't know, man. There's, there's, there's a lot of gym. There's a lot. Of, there's a lot of just our group of friends together being drunk and stupid shit and suing. So that's a tough one. Sorry, I can't be more specific. Yeah, she's she stumped the both of us because you're too calm and I'm too fucking uncontrollable. Yeah. 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 I've calmed down a lot, but I still have my moments, <laughs> like Thanksgiving three years ago. Damn it, Jim. Jim, you just you uh like I said, I, I'm I'm truly amazed you haven't Have you ever been in a fight in your life? Not since like I was like eight or ten. No, not since back then. Wow. Okay. Interesting. Hmm. I, I just I don't know how you haven't gotten hit. But like I said, I guess people kinda just go, uh, oh, whatever. Yeah, they just look at me and just go, oh, this fucking guy. <laughs> Uh, maybe maybe like a boomer in Left 4 Dead, they know if they touch me, I'll just fucking explode all over them. Damn it! <laughs> and not in rage and fury, but in juices. Yeah, I, there, there's a there's a point of diminishing returns. It's like, what's the point? <laughs> this is very true. But no, those are great questions. Thank you guys. Good. No, I love them. Good, good questions. Yep, great questions, and buy a t-shirt. Yeah. Thank you, Jim. <laughs> All, All right. right, so this next one, this uh, you said you were happy, Jim. I, but I am to, generally and happy. You did mention you did mention you were going to go on a rant, so I want to see if this is a happier rant. Yeah, it's not like one that I can be overly mad about because we've been here before. So if you remember about a year ago, maybe six to eight months ago, whatever it was, you know the guys who behind Diablo were hyping up this big reveal that they had, and they had this big you know conference about it. And it turned out to be a mobile game. Mm -hmm. And the community, uproar, man, this is ridiculous. And then the people who said, well, guys, you're kind of being, it's not that big of a deal. Like, calm down. Like, people like Pat and Ian, like, they got roasted for daring to say, guys, maybe you're taking this rage a little bit too far. Well, well uh, okay, yeah, go ahead. Well, I, I was just going to say, it's happened again. So, I mean, in this, I... So Pokemon, there was a Pokemon director, whatever they want to call them, and there had been one last week, and the one last week announced the sequel to Pokemon Snap, and everyone was happy, and it would be great to see a new Pokemon Snap. People have been asking it for it for 20 years. Awesome. And they went, check back next week, we're going to have another Pokemon Creates event, or whatever the fuck it's called. So everyone starts speculating and speculating. They're going, oh, are they going to remake the fourth gen games, or are they going to remake this game, or is it going to be a new first party title? You know, all this idea around. And the event comes, and it's Pokemon Unite, which for those who have not seen it, and, you know, I guess you're not on the internet if you haven't, what it basically is, is a MOBA for mobile. And everyone went off the fucking rails again. So, for the, like, everyone just started bitching. YouTube video after YouTube video, long fucking winded streams. The video itself was downvoted to hell, blah, 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 blah. Like I said, all stuff we've kind of seen before. Go on. Let me ask you a question. So I think I had a similar take on the when, when you went over to Diablo stuff last year. Yeah. <clears throat> all right. I'm not the biggest on Pokemon. Right. So if I say something out of line, it's because I'm coming from a place of ignorance. But here's the deal. Um, is it weird that they tried to hype it up like it was going to be a bigger announcement? Sure. Do you expect it from your developers at this point that no matter what they release, they're going to hype it up? You should. Um, I feel like Pokemon is one of those franchises where it's had so many different versions of its game. I mean, I don't know. When was the last actual, like the original Pokemon games? What, what was it? Last two year. Two years ago? Last like, year. Short, last and sealed, year? Okay. short and sealed. Which, like, okay. the graphics were crap and everyone bitched about that. But that was really, yeah, that was the last one. So, so this is my question with Pokemon. <clears throat> um, you know, you had, like you said, the people wanted the snap. 
redone. We had Pokemon Go for mobile, which is uh, arguably one of the most successful video games, mobile games of the past decade. Like like what it did from for a gaming standpoint, getting people out, like the shit it did, that was huge. Um, and like you said, and I tried to look into it a little bit, but basically, so it is like a, it's a kind of like a team based, not tactical. It, it's it's kind of like League of Legends, kind of shit like that. Okay. I, I, what I don't get is, and it's is, you know, it's the mobile thing where it's free to start, so I'm sure there's going to be microtransactions to unlock characters oh, and upgrade sure. and all that, which you expect. But that's what I'm saying. Like, is there? I Diablo was different because they had nothing, and then they release this. My point is, isn't there enough other stuff if you really want to play Pokemon, you can enjoy and either just completely ignore this or wait till they do release whatever you're looking for? Like Diablo, I fully got the outrage because there was that'd be like, well, it is like the fucking Half-Life thing where they're going to a VR only thing. When you have these franchises that don't have shit for years and years and years and years, and then you release a mobile shitty whatever... That sucks. But for Pokemon, like Jim just said, there was a game release last year. You have so many different versions of games. And how how do you want to see... Po- like, what do people expect when you say you want better graphics? Like, they weren't thrilled with it last year. Do you want it like the hyper-realistic? Like, what? I, I'm not sure what you need to get your fix because Pokemon has never been... And I could be wrong about the graphics it's really about collect the collection the finding the hunting the like the evolving the the going against other people like <clears throat> graphics are just a secondary thing with that no one buys those games and says this is for the graphics so i i, I don't know like to me I, I don't get why people are freaking out because it's not like you're not going to get another pokemon game probably by next year it's not like you've been left in the dark with options so i i don't get it but once again i'm not that deep into it so maybe you can explain it better to me jim yeah i mean like you said it's never been about the graphics there's been a lot of the things that you hear before and you you did make a good point like with the diablo one it's the first diablo announcement after a couple years like it was a few years removed from diablo 3 coming out so i can get the disappointment there fine and the what the argument that a lot of the people bitch and have the most is well, why did they just announce this last week at the other Direct and not build all this hype? Fair point. I think that would have been a way smarter thing to do. You didn't need to have a second thing just to announce a mobile game. You could have just announced it before Snap and have Snap be the big, oh my god, and then, you know, release your mobile game and whatever. No one would have cared. But it's it's all the things you hear before, like the pay-to-win to stuff. I'm like, fine, then don't download it and don't play it then. Like, you don't need to play this goddamn game. And then you have the people who are complaining that it's owned by Tencent, which is that big Chinese, you know, developer that owns the Epic Games Store and steals all your information and sells it on the black market. <laughs> like, once again, motherfucker, if you don't think your information is already out there and sold left and right, I don't know what to tell you at this point. There is no privacy and you have no security. It's long gone. You probably have a Google Home sitting right next to you right now, too. Or you leave Siri on your iPhone. Like, calm down. And then... It's the people who are fucking... The ones that get me the most are the ones who are mad that it isn't a remake of a fourth-gen game or that it isn't another one of the Let's Go games. They're like, oh, I was, you know, I want this. Like, you're all the... This is Pokemon. This is the franchise more than almost anything else outside of Madden that people complain that they never do anything new. So, like, half of the people complaining, I'm sure, are ones that were going to be complaining that have complained before when short and sealed came out that it didn't try anything enough new stuff either so it's just like what 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 do you people want like you know i I, i'm almost mad that i have to have this topic because they could have just thrown it in last week's presentation and no one would have cared yeah i can't ever blame a developer for wanting to create hype maybe because they knew it wasn't going to get no matter their job last week yeah i mean their job is to sell you guys shit and to get and even negative publicity like this gets more eyes on it. And it might get people that aren't that crazy about one way or the other or care looking at it and saying, well, maybe I'll download it and try it. Like, you know, it, it's one of those deals. Like, just realize 
if you if you really feed into it and you get negative and you start commenting and you're whatever you're just doing exactly what they want that's there's a reason the saying goes there's no such thing as bad press when you're a company like this who just wants to get the game name out like you're not <clears throat> they're you're doing exactly what they want and bitching about it is never going to make a difference it's has it made a difference for any game that's ever got that much bitched about honestly no it doesn't so, look, look at the last of us too at, at, well, exactly and here's the deal what if this game is fun like shouldn't people more worry about that like is it odd that Here, they're doing what is. a MOBA thing it's because like, it's mobile that's why everyone's bitching all the hardcore that, gamers hear mobile and they go Rawr, not a real game Rawr, how can they blah, blah, blah. Like, which I would, I would I would agree with a thousand percent but Pokemon Go is anyone really arguing that that game wasn't I saw people that were that in their game was 50s what? on my train, like it's those older generations from us that you you know they don't really know how to use iPhones and they do the annoying shit with their fingers where they touch it too much or zoom in too much <laughs> yep. and they're trying to do it at train stations because they just were like intrigued by it. Like I haven't seen that shit since the fucking Wii. Like that clearly pokemon and games can be done on your mobile phones and whether you like it or not i and i've said many times i prefer my gaming on consoles pc whatever else but there is a market and your phones are basically mini computers so stop bitching that games are your main franchises that you love are releasing some form of a game there was that super mario run and i remember some people kind of mad that it was just a a shitty like run game but it was just mario like yeah all your major franchises are probably going to cash in and then there's like shitty ports like mortal kombat 11 and not uh call of duty nazi zombies they all had mobile ports of their games on your phones it's just so more people can play it so it's like don't get mad about that i don't get get why people bother getting so upset yeah i i don't know either like it's another thing where it's just like it's a mobile game like are you just mad you wasted your time and you like it was a half hour presentation fuck cares like just stop <laughs> it's not that big a deal yeah maybe don't watch the presentations get the highlights yeah fucking look at do what i did go on twitter after it's done and find out if it's worth watching or not fucking nerd typing yourself up all the goddamn time <laughs> uh Jim, what are you going to do when they announce the next Star Fox game and it's just mobile? <laughs> fine! If it controls okay, then fine. I don't care. And plus, after Zero, like, I don't care. Like, Star Fox, right, what would you Star have, Fox hasn't been good since the fucking 64 era anyway, so what do you want? What would you have done if instead of Streets of Rage 4 coming out on the consoles, it was like basically a quick time event on your mobile phone? Ugh. That would have been that would have been a heartbreaker. I would have downloaded it and paid it, played it. I probably would have paid for it if it had, you know, if it was like a ten dollar game to download it. But that would have been a disappointment right there. Yeah, it would have made, so, made for good content with you know a bitchy video about it. <laughs> but yeah, no, I uh, I always I just try to say I I can I can understand and I try to have empathy for people. Like if this is the series you love the most, and this is what they do. Just have faith. You're going to get a new version of probably whatever version of game you want eventually. And this is a stopgap for them to make a little bit more money. Right or wrong, just move past it. Yeah. And maybe you, you try the game and maybe you end up liking it. Who knows? I never thought I would like a goddamn Marvel trading card game on my cell phone. And then me and Jim got hooked on that shit. Yep. So if the game is fun, who cares where it's available? Exactly. So, yeah, that's the only true gaming uh, topic, you know, current events we have for this week. So, mm -hmm. next up, uh, becoming a bit of a recurring bit, thanks to you guys, and thank you so much for participating. And I love it, yep. Yep. Games and pop music. This week, a suggestion comes to us from our buddy Castle Zots on Twitter, one of the best dudes out there, both for content and just as a guy, so make sure you follow him if you're not already. And he's comparing this song, Take It Easy, from Herzog's Y on the Genesis, with Call Me by Blondie. Brian, you, you've listened to these songs. What are your thoughts? It, I mean, it's pretty pretty damn remarkable. The I don't know if you call it the riff, the melody, but the general tone, it's there. Um, and 
obviously, just like I've been doing with the previous ones, I'll make an individual clip where I'll stop talking right now, and you can listen to both of these, the the songs, so you can hear the parts I'm talking about. Brian, it doesn't sound like you stopped talking. <laughs> Shut up. Shut up, um, Mimsy. But, but here's the deal. If you click on the links below and you listen... Yeah, it's pretty it, it, what what I'm more fascinated in and what I love about these stories is who would have been listening to Blondie call me like, you know, and and you're developing a shooter for the Sega Genesis and you say, "You know what? I think I got a good idea for a song for Now now I you and I played that game. Did we review that? No, we haven't reviewed uh hers a lot. I, I remember we did the cover art, but I, right. I know we've, we've played it. But um, Take It Easy, is that a specific level? I couldn't tell you. Main title? I couldn't tell you. I've only played it like a handful of times. It's not the. It's not definitely not pick up and play. Like You have to put some investment into it. So I couldn't tell you what level it was from. It's a good song. So I don't, Damn yeah, good track. I, I, and it's but, long, too. Uh, it's like two and a half minutes. Well, let's calm it down because the sound quality isn't great. But Here it comes way, to Genesis. <laughs> I'm not bashing it. You, you appreciate complex um, composition in the music. Yeah. I understand why. Because you are a musician. And I respect that part of what your argument is. But when you put it in a shitty blender and it comes out hurting your ears, don't tell me it's good. Like, there's just... Just don't argue that. Like, just say, I really think it's a good complex composition... But it could have been delivered a little better. Instead, Jim will make an argument. It's like, you done that, bitch. Look, you it's, got the, the ge- it's not, it's like, not like prog the- rock or fucking jazz fusion. It isn't just fucking sounds thrown together like what turned out to be Streets of Rage 3. It has an actual composition. It does, but it just still has that. When people say that it has a Genesis sounds, they mean one of two things. First thing is it excellent has that kind or of shit. Like, and this is excellent. No, it, it, it means it has that kind of. A, heavy metal guitar rifting sound that most Genesis games had and it can be some can be memorable or it has that same attempt at that sound and it just comes through awfully and here's the deal I like the Genesis arguably just as much as Jim I'm just not willing to have the rose tinted glasses to say it's a good track it's Especially when you're taking it off of Call Me by Blondie and you make it sound like that. Because then it just, after hearing that, it made me want to go listen to the original song. And I don't even necessarily love that song. It's just now I want to listen to it because of this. But no, this was Zotz. That was a an amazing pull. And I love pulls like this because they are unique. And it's still backing up what I'm saying. Like The more I listen, to, since we've been doing these bits... And I hope anyone listening or if you've seen our bits with this is when you listen to music, keep an ear out for like other thing, other songs, especially from, um, you know, any pop culture songs, because chances are they've probably been inspired. I'm still curious. I want to see more uh, actual, you know, music being made by musicians that was inspired by video games. I feel like it's probably a lot less that way. But still, I, I love this, uh, you know, there's not a lot of original thought. And I like, you, you can see the the mind meld of the guy who was making this. And he was probably, like, had that on the background. And it's like, yeah, okay, I can make this work. So, yeah, it's a great pull, Zot. And I want to see, what do you call it, ones like, um, you know, that, like, really are just, like, more, like, pop or, like, songs you wouldn't expect that took the melodies, like Janet Jackson. Not like something like nowadays, like Power Glove that plays every convention, but, you know, they're purposely trying to sound like, you know, nerdy video game music, so. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah, no, very good pull, and I can definitely, I, like, it took me a little bit until, like, I heard, like, the, almost like the rhythm tracks in the background, with, like, the 16th note parts and all that stuff, like, it's definitely the same rhythm there, so I can see the comparisons. Yeah, for sure. Ooh, that's an interesting one you got. <clears throat> so, once again, thank you, Zots. <laughs> but now we're moving on to uh, one of our recurring bitch, the bitch. The witch is better. Um, right, don't talk about your wife like that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Jim, don't make me say what you say. <laughs> what? I don't say things. I say nothing. I'm a good boy. 
Oh, uh, all right. So, which is better, the mini classic consoles, which Jim actually just posted, which is why I feel like you have a feeling you put this up here, or the Raspberry Pi? And especially well, the reason for it is because every time one of these new ones gets announced, every comment thread, well, why don't you just get a pie? It's almost like a meme at this point. So, I want to throw it out to the masses there. And Jim and I, I mean, you... All right. <laughs> I want you to go first because I will take the opposite approach, whatever you choose. Let's put it this way. Right. And I'm that, only that... going to do it for devil's advocate because I'm not trying to argue you. Jim and I have talked about this at great length, and maybe not this directly, but we've talked about the value of a Raspberry Pi. We've talked about the value of the classic editions and these mini consoles and values. So whatever Jim says, I will go opposite, not because it's my belief, but because I'll try to give an opposing viewpoint. All right. Um, you know what? I'm going to go off the beaten path because I think there's, there's the logical answer and then there's the the more answer that you feel. And I I like the mini consoles. I like them. I think they're cool. Like, here, here's the problem with the Raspberry Pi to me. Sure, you can have every single game in the world on there. But it's almost like, it's it's, it's like trying to pick your best gym story. There's, it's, you're just, fill, it's too many riches. You have too much to pick from. And I don't think you're ever going to have a chance with these, with a Raspberry Pi, unless you're just strictly putting on their games that you grew up with of ever really putting the time in to discover something new. Whereas with a lot of these uh, classic consoles, they're, for the most part, I'll say, there's some duds, but for the most part, they're curated pretty well. And, like, there's a chance that you can have, you know, uh, like a B-tier game from a console's library that you just missed or never played before, but that you can play and try out in a convenient way with a controller that's shaped like the controller from back in the day to give you a more authentic experience to it basically just comes down to like the presentation and using an actual controller or the closest thing to it to discover something that they're going hey you'll probably like this here's something we're throwing on there give it a shot to have a feel of the overall console and i think it works especially well for ones like the super nes mini or the genesis mini or the turbo graphics mini where they throw it's all games that like it's sp it spreads a wide enough net that you can get an idea for the console itself and being able to use an actual controller with it just is the icing on the cake. So, like, yeah, you can have a Raspberry Pi with 10 billion ROMs with your USB controller of choice. It isn't a great specific fit for any one of them. I just think to have the closest thing, and especially since being first party and licensed to, um, you know, the actual games from back in the day, I just think the mini experience is overall better. Yeah, and uh, as I said... I'll be going the Pi uh, just to oppose Jim to try and give uh, – I agree with everything Jim said, and I actually am surprised he hit on some of the points I was going to point out. Um, <clears throat> but what I will say, for one thing, um, I kind of look at the mini versions as a, a quick – some of them are really well-developed, and I even like the uh, the GUIs and, and the, the whole displays they have for their games – um, and there's a lot of thought put into them. And what always pisses me off is when you do get, like a lot of people, like Jim said, when you get these new mini versions, there's a lot of people bitching because they always want their particular game on it. And here's one thing I never understood. If you're a gamer, like Jim, you, you have a pretty damn impressive and big Genesis and N64 collection. Oh. Not, not massive, but if right. they create it, and, and they obviously did create a Genesis Mini, and if they ever create the N64 Mini, I feel like so many people turn around and just say, I want my favorite games on that Mini. It's like, but you already own your favorite game for the system, and your system works. Why do you want to see it again? Unless, of course, it's just strictly so you can use HDMI. So, yeah, if you want it for the HDMI compatibility, I get it, but... I don't know, man. Like, I, I kind of feel like these mini versions are never going to satisfy everyone. The hardcore gamers that grew up with them, you're not really going to get it unless it's a thing of introducing it to your kids. And if you're a true gamer, the Raspberry Pi is the ultimate. Like, for someone like me, a collection 
I don't. I have a, a meager collection at best. I, I think I have 300 games, something to that effect, and it's spread over many consoles. I don't. I, I don't hardcore collect because I care more. Let me play the game. Do I have fun with it? Um, to Jim's point, you can have thousands of games on the pie, and just like when you used to download music illegally and ha- and you would download a whole album, you know you're not listening to 4,000 songs, but everyone's phones and iPads and iPods would be loaded to the gills with songs that you'd skip through every time you put it on shuffle. Um, I think it's more up to the person. Like, if you are of the type that... If you know you're going to spend money on a mini and you're going to play all 30 games, 20 games, whatever it comes preloaded, it might give you a little bit of an option, but the chances are they're going to do the greatest hits. They're going to be all games you've played. The Raspberry Pi truly lets you experience everything. And you can set it up, to, and I'm someone who's all about customization. Like, and the price of a Pi, I mean, you can get those things for like 25 bucks. Now you got to build the case around it. You got to get other parts, but it goes up from there. Right, you have and to own all the ROMs that you have, or else you're committing a crime. Uh, <laughs> <no> <laughs> comment. Good, good thing. Good thing none of us downloaded all the ROMs that existed back in 2009 off torrent sites, huh? <laughs> or, or that still exist on anywhere you Google. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. I mean, you can easily. Uh, you can have every arcade, every NES, every Super NES, every Genesis in a matter of two minutes or less, depending on your internet speed. But here's the deal. Yeah, I don't expect you to play all of them. And if you decide to download every single ROM, I get it. Um, but I love the... And, and Jim made a point where if you're looking for authenticity and your concern is, well, the... The Pi is a USB cord of a, a controller of your choice. Yeah, if I can go back and use my favorite controller, which would be a PlayStation or a <clears throat> or a 360 or a modern, whatever controller, and I can use that on my old games, why is that bad? Like, it makes me enjoy it. Like, if I want authenticity... Um, that's fine if i'm trying to set a record or prove something but um unless i'm trying to teach a lesson like i grew up with authenticity i grew up with the super nes and the genesis i don't need to refill that from my childhood like i knew what the game was playing with the original controller so now if i'm experiencing a new game i want to do it whatever way i want to do it and you're very limited with these mini consoles and like i said my bigger problem is either they are purposefully i know they have license issues or whatever but they always feel leave you wanting probably a little bit more and um they all of them i feel like have some kind of issue like one of the cords is too small one of this one of that and i don't need more shit taking up room in my game room i want less so the pie is perfect for those of us who already have seven to 15 to whatever number of consoles we have jim has a whole collection of boxes that haven't even been opened that just sit in his room he doesn't need more more goddamn space taken up but he's gonna keep buying them because he likes that retro feel and i get it me give me one little box if i want to build a whole arcade cabinet around that box and make it my own i can do that so the pie is really it's uh it's somebody who wants to really invest time and be a true gamer the minis are for people who are like, oh, I haven't played an NES in 20 years, and I remember liking that. Let me get it, and me and my kid can play it, and we'll re-experience it together. There's a whole market for that. God bless you. But if you're a true gamer, you want to experience the most you can, you want to customize your shit, the pie is obviously the way to go. So, there we go. And let us know below in the comments for... The overall podcast, or for I'm sure we're going to clip this part. Let us know below what you think's better. Yeah, exactly. All right. Those, so god, then, those goddamn people who always have to actually, well, actually, why don't you just get a Raspberry Pi? Right. Uh, That's one of the reasons. I know. We all know. <laughs> I don't know who what's worse, them or the PC people. Oh, the PC Master Race people? Well, if you just get a PC, you can have the top tier graphics of every game. Not by... <laughs> I, I, I just, I don't get, like, 
why do people love to shit on other people's parade? Like, can't you just be happy? Like, people are like, oh, I finally get... Like, like, like my favorite are the goddamn, like, Android nerds who, like, when iPhone gets something that the Android did, it's like, we did that two years ago. It's like We did that seven years ago. Well, yeah. Okay. Okay, what, fine. What, 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 what did that earn you? Did that get you more blowjobs? I don't think it did. Like, yeah, you know, I, you know, I, you know, it's never gotten anyone laid. A green text message. You know what gets people laid? Yeah. Blue text messages. Step your game up. I just, it never fucking like. And, and yeah, when it comes to video games, like, dude, just did. Did you play the game? Cool. Did you? How did you play it? I don't really care. Let's just talk about the music. Let's talk about the ending. Let's talk. If you're getting into lit, lag, and and the fucking frame rates and shit, you're going down a different cycle, which I probably can't go down that road with you. Can we just talk about things on a more... What was your experience playing the game? You know, like... And unfortunately, I think with the Pi people, with the PC people, it, it becomes like a dick measuring contest. So it's like, that shouldn't be your basis right there. I don't get it. It's just... Right, it's the world we live in. It... It is. Everyone, I mean, no matter, I mean, people who are like chess experts would talk shit to other chess experts about if they use this type of board or that board. Like, I'm sure, like, no matter what niche you're in, people want to, like, naturally compete with other people and show their superiority. And it's like, cool, man, do what you got to do. But goddamn, you got to recognize what the hell you're doing. You better recognize. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> So I see you kept with this theme. Yep. With our final topic. Roll over. And actually, actually another uh, reoccurring bit for overrated, underrated. The NES Mini. Uh, some would say. I mean, obviously Atari's always had the rollout of the flashbacks, but this is the real one that kicked off the uh, the Mini craze. I'll call it. Yep. Overrated, underrated. The NES Mini. The classic edition. Overrated, underrated. Came with 30 games. $60 at release. Came with one controller with a very tiny little cord. Very limited was stock. Was it 60 or was it 80? I, I think it was 60. The Super NES was 80 and that came with two controllers. And I think that was a way better deal. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I always confuse the price of those two. But didn't the NES, it came with how many games? Yeah, 30 games, right? Yep. Okay. So, uh, do you want me to go first, or you want to go first? I'll go first, and I'm going to say it's overrated, just because a lot of the games you look at, I, I think it has the syndrome of being kind of like the first one of these like real top-tier ones, like not the Atari flashbacks and shit like that, but the first one of like a major console that like the big nostalgia bubble hits. And I think a console like this throwing on there, like, Balloon Fight, or Excite Bike, or Zelda 2, or uh, Castlevania 2, or f random games that you don't think anything at all of the system, like Galaga and Pac Man. Like, I don't know. I think overall it was a cool first attempt, and even taking the scarcity of it out of the fact, the fact it only comes with one controller, and the controller is super short, and yeah, I got it. Ooh, I got to hit the reset button, like the real thing to go back to the menu. Fine. I just think overall for the package it is, like, it's a pretty good system with a pretty good collection, but I just think it could have been a lot better. And it would have been, it probably would have been a lot better in my mind if it did what a lot of these later ones did after the fact, and they threw one of those really scarce games on there, just as, like, that little treat for people who will never afford, like, an Earthbound or a Little Samson or something like that. Throw us one of those top-tier ones that no one will ever buy anyway, just to give us a lark. So, I think it's... Like I said, somewhat a victim of being a product of being the first real one, but I'm going to go with slightly overrated. Okay. I think it's overrated too, but I'll try to do devil's advocate and say underrated. Oh, um, all right. Of the mini consoles. I was going to say, Brian, if you, want, like Jim's, if you want me to help you here, I can give you an easy one. No, I mean, I mean, so here's the deal. I do think it's overrated and I think it's overrated for pretty much all the reasons Jim said. In addition to, I'm going to make the counter argument my same argument, and you'll hear, you, you'll understand in a second, but it, it was the first to create this craze. And 
to me that's a bad thing because now all these systems are are jumping on the bandwagon and creating many versions of this system but it was the first one and like and as jim and i just said we're not counting the flashbacks because there were so many shitty versions there were some good ones but ultimately this was the one that other you know every company is like well we could just do a mini version of ours and it got everyone sparked and excited about potentials for systems like you know now that we got playstation mini it's only time will come when we get the n64 mini dreamcast like all these systems will eventually you know it's in the books like they're just figuring out the emulation and whatever and hopefully we get shit like the atari jaguar mini because that's something i'd be excited for but it opened up a door for nostalgia where you don't want to go out and collect for a system that you know you haven't played in many years and you don't know what the market's like like for me it was amazing when jim and i started the site I was, like, going to start getting real hardcore into collecting for all my classics and favorites, and especially from the NES, like Contra and Castlevania. I couldn't believe the fucking price for games. Of course, we started at a time when it was at the height of those games being expensive. Oh, yeah. But I was like, I was like, oh, fuck this. I guess I'll just emulate, which is p what pushed me to emulate. Now, <clears throat> the mini system comes out. It's, it didn't have every game I wanted, but it had plenty and it will it as jim pointed out in the previous segment it is just a nice little like let me try out these other games that i haven't tried some of them they sure as shit ain't classic and they sure as shit aren't what i think of when i play the nes um putting aside the i've never gotten the bitching and complaining i can deal with short cords because there's extension cables do i want the system closer to me no is it optimally designed no um but i like the gui and i like the idea of downloading the uh the instruction manuals to your phone like they were trying something there that they were like melding the idea of using your phones trying to use current technology and do this new thing and i think honestly of all the consoles and i haven't played them all but I think I like the menu and the whatever setup of the NES the best of all the mini consoles. Um, Super NES is close, but and I haven't played the mini or the Turbo Graphics Mini, so Jim, you can tell me about that one. But I feel like the NES really they did a really solid job with that. Um, so it, it can be underrated for being a trailblazer and actually being pretty damn good. I feel like some of the things that have followed it, you get less value. Now, Jim pointed out, you, you get rarer games. But as Jim also said, you get the shitheads who are like, well, you're playing the rare game, but it's not the authentic original cart, which da 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 da, da. Um, So it, it's always a toss-up, but I think it's underrated because it was the first of its kind. It did it really well. And now it's opened the door to let people know you can do these mini versions and there's a market. So for the old retro gaming community that you want to get people excited about and they don't want to spend tons of money maybe it's helped lower the cost on some games that should should not be as high as they are fair enough yeah so with that guys we are keeping this a shorter episode yeah right um, uh, talk about i don't think did you talk about your beer before because i know i didn't talk about mine before um you know i talked about when i was first drinking it but in general it's really light it's uh the cranberry flavor it's like adds that tartness not really sweetness it goes down super smooth i went through two cans and these are the big boy cans so um i really like the mead but it's not gonna sell you on mead if you've never tried it if you're someone who's tried a bunch of different meads you might enjoy it um perfect for summer i'll say that all right cool uh yeah this morning grab back nothing special Fine. There's all, I was drinking out of a pint glass, and there was almost no aroma at all. Very smooth, very drinkable, goes down easy, not a lot of aftertaste. Yeah, I mean, if you like box, I guess... I, I, actually, if you like any real kind of beer, especially craft beer, you'll drink it and say, yeah, it's good. Like, that's about it. It's nothing special, yeah. but it's perfectly fine. And my second beer, I finished off the last of the uh, Shape of Hops to come from the Shamney Creek that I had. So, I talked about that last week. Nice. All right, guys. Well, 
Thank you all for watching. We hope you enjoyed it. And as always, if you aren't already, please subscribe to us on iTunes, subscribe to us on YouTube, whatever platform you're listening. Give us a rating if you can. Give us the best one. If you want to shit on us, just do it in the comments and we can address it. Yeah. But we really appreciate all your support. Like Jim said, if you want any merchandise, check out our link below. And until next time, guys. Cheers. Cheers.